Why do you think that the cutting edge use of the media, of the web, like Huffington Post, is not being done by newspapers, who all now have websites, but by others like yourself? Well, one of the reasons is precisely the question you asked. A lot of newspapers are trying to have it both ways. They want to put some of their content behind paywalls. They don't quite understand um, how news consumption has changed, how habits have changed. And uh, also, we are, for example, mixing it up. We are having very established reporters like Howard or like Peter Goodman from the New York Times. And we also have young reporters. In fact, one of the things that we're going to accelerate is hiring um, young journalists um, right after they graduate, either journalism schools or, um, you know, Yale. In fact, we just hired somebody who was the Good choice. arts editor at the Yale Daily News. He just graduated last year. This is his first job. He's fantastic. You know, there is incredible You have an affinity for young people, don't you? I can just Absolutely. see it. In, you know, in, that in, wouldn't happen at the New York Times because they would want you to have uh, paid your dues, so to speak, you know, yeah. to have uh, gone and worked uh, in other papers. We yeah. really believe that there are so many talented young people um, who have done, actually, great journalism with their school newspapers, and we'd love them to come on. In fact, if anybody's listening, we are hiring. <laughs> that... And we'll put, uh, we'll, we'll tell you how to get a hold yes. of Ariana at the end of the, the show, but uh, you heard it spontaneously from our guest. Well, you know, uh, this, there's so many implications of the new media, and in the next segment, we're going to focus on the, the political use of it, but you are also an author, and you just came out September 7th with your 13th book, Third World America. Briefly tell us about... Uh, the decline of the middle class here in America? Well, obviously, this is a very startling title because we're not yet third world America. The reason I picked that title is because I wanted to sound an alarm while there is still time to course correct. Yes. And um, right now, we can still avoid the iceberg hitting the Titanic. But the, the trajectory we are on is a very dangerous one. And there are many... Um, data I can point out to, including our crumbling infrastructure that would turn us into a third world country, but the really significant um, decline is the decline of the middle class. Yeah. And the gap between the wealthy and the poor, the, the discrepancy between the average CEO wage and the average worker that used to be 30 or 40 to 1 is now 1,000 to 1. Uh, it, it, it's, a, right. it's a real it's danger. Like, it's like... A, um, amazing what has happened in the last 30 years. This didn't just happen because of the recent almost financial meltdown. Yeah. Uh, this sort of decline started in 1980. And um, through successive administrations, Republican and Democrat, uh, it really continued. And right now, we have something which is very un-American, which is that upward mobility for millions of Americans has become downward mobility. And upward mobility has always been at the heart of the American dream. That the kids live better than the parents. Exactly. And, and now they can't you, afford the yeah, house. And they yeah, can't. now you have two-thirds of Americans in a recent survey who said that they expect their children to be worse off than yeah. they are. And you, in, if you look at um, international data, we are 10th in upward mobility. So why mobility. is that? Well, what has happened is that through special interest buying public policy, we basically deregulated um, a lot of the practices, you know, mortgage companies, credit card companies, or we basically... Laissez-faire. Yeah, and... or we allowed um, the regulators to be captured by the regulated, because yeah. that's another problem. I mean, Fannie and Freddie had regulators. They had yes. entire agencies regulating them. Yeah. But they were not really regulating them. We saw the same thing around the BP oil spill. They had regulators. The mining disaster. Asleep at the switch. Asleep at the switch. Yeah. Well, this is fascinating, and uh, it has profound political implications. And in the next segment of our show, we're going to ask Ariana her analysis of what this all means for politics and get her take on the midterm elections that are coming up and also on the Obama administration. You won't want to miss the rest of this show. 
Electricity is different from any other product we use. We can't store it. We must use it wisely, but can't do without it completely. And there's no substitute for this special form of energy that brings us light, comfort, and progress. That's why California needs new standards that can keep utilities strong, guard against another power crisis, and protect consumers from the kind of shortages that often affect other commodities. Because electricity is different. When the Port of Long Beach employs more people for new projects and construction workers for improvements, it has a positive effect for local businesses like my restaurant, Las Islitas. The port keeps the whole community busy. <laughs> Especially our cook, Jorge. <laughs> the Port of Long Beach, investing in jobs, investing in you.